Hello, welcome to the Yellow Man Recap ah, stuff. Yeah, it's still broken. Yeah, but she's feeling better. Much better. Since she went to sleep and woke up as a new person. Woke up at 11.30 as a new person. And we're recapping Invasion of the Body Snatchers. So this is a, a remake of the old one. Uh, both of the movie and the recap. Both of them are very old though. We did a full recap. It was very fun. Yeah, we had very fun. Like, I had fun. But there was not enough space in the camera. <laughs> and we didn't notice that. Not until the end. So, yeah. So, so I'll be, keep, be keeping a red dot eye out for this. So, we're just gonna do it again. Yep. Here we go. Let's go, Red Sox! Oh, the Red Sox are officially World Series champions. You probably found that out already. If you're finding it out for the first time by watching our recap, then hats off to you. You're a weirdo. And. Let's huh? get into the recap. What? If they just found out that the uh, Red Sox won the World Series from watching this Maybe recap, they're just from Israel. Hot breaking news. Israelis. Do you know anyone from Israel that watches this? My mom, maybe? No, she doesn't. Because she would have texted you saying, time. What you said is true about me making love in the same oh. bedroom as you. <laughs> She's watching. She doesn't understand what we're saying. Okay. Yeah. Hello, Ima. Weird that you had sex in the same room as a baby. But, um, Stop it! I know. Well, you would have said that if you could speak back then. But we watched Invasion of the Body Snatchers. And it starts out with... If you just join us now for the first time, Matt has a yeah, joke. It's a, it's a callback from a true fact of something that she had It's to not a true fact. Episodes. He said that my mom told him once that... My mom and my dad had sex while I was in the room as a baby. Yes. <laughs> what? Yes, she never told you that. <laughs> yes, yeah, she confirmed it. So we uh, watched the thing. So you keep, the he keeps telling me that. Yes, it's a new recurring <laughs> thing. If you read things we already talked about, then I talk about things that I've said in other ones. So this movie starts off with jelly cells from space and major cities, and the gel lands on plants. And it rains, and it goes into the soil, and flowers sprout out of what look like, uh, what, what are those pieces of food called? Grape leaves. Stuffed grape leaves. Can I say my... I said it already on the first recap that we did. You don't um, have to say that you already I said do, it on Oh, there. come on. But I said them all. Leave yeah, but, me alone. But, but literally, we're doing everything that we already did. So you don't have to say, I said this in the last one. Okay, but, but it, it's not like it's not because of the movie, but because I had an accident and that was... What? Yeah. That Go was... On. Okay, so I had an accident. A car hit me uh, while I was driving my scooter. I'm okay. I was... On the wrong uh, side of the road. Yeah. Go on. Yeah. What? <laughs> no, I was just resting all weekend. Yeah. So anyway, when we recapped it, it was the first time that I tried to write with that thing. I sprained my hand, so can't like really write. Yeah. So my first Your handwriting note... looks the same. Huh? Your handwriting looks the same. Oh no! Come on! Okay. Yes. It's much worse like this. My handwriting is like terrible. Uh, if I want I can do a nice one but I just don't. Her handwriting and... has a very thick Israeli accent. <laughs> anyway. She writes from right to left. My, my first note was I can't write. Can I? Yes I can. Yeah, good. That's it. So, the, uh, write what you think. Put it all down. So, these grape leaves are, fl are flowering, and this lady, her name is Elizabeth, she picks one, and then we see groups of children on the swings and, and picking flowers. They were on a field trip or something. And then we see a famous actor make a bizarre cameo. Robert Duvall is a priest. And he's on a swing. Why do you say cameo? Look, a cameo means like a brief appearance. Oh yeah, you know, but why do you use that word? I don't know, I'm not a thesaurus. Cameo in French is a camel. Okay, well, camel. Robert Duvall was wearing a camel suit with a priest outfit. <laughs> Just over came back it. from Israel and got some souvenirs. Yeah. So. You know how priests go to Israel. So yeah. he... Uh, See where Jesus Christ was born. <laughs> So, you never see him again. It's weird, but cool. This is a star-studded cast. Can I ask the same questions again? What does the, the title... I wrote that was my note. What does the title mean? 
Well, we're getting to that. You know, you know, movies sometimes don't explain the title in the very beginning of the movie. Yeah, but I didn't know. Sometimes you think a movie called Invasion of the Body Snatchers so is about body wait. snatchers that invade. But I didn't know what invasion means, yes. and I didn't know what snatchers mean. Well, you know how snatcher is like the peaceful kingdom of Palestine was invaded by a bunch of people that claim that they used to live there, and and they just took over. Yeah, like the the like Indian, that. like the Indians and the Irish people. Uh no, the people of the India, English. the people of India never took no, over Indians, Ireland. No, Indians, Native Americans. Yeah. Yeah, like they never took over Ireland. No. <laughs> okay. My reverse. Don't She's make confused. me laugh. She's confused. <laughs> so, so the lady picks these flowers. She brings them home to her loving boyfriend Jeffrey, who is watching a basketball game with headphones on, and he is uh, the the house is not clean. There's mail on the floor, and his wife comes home and nags him Men. about it. Which is not fair. She should just clean it up and get him a beer. And, uh, cheers. I got us these beers. Because I'm a feminist husband in 2000, whatever year you're listening to He this. is feminist. He's just, like, telling you those things. Yeah. He doesn't, like, shave his armpits and, like, all of it. All the package. Yeah, so this hot little Black number it. starts tidying up like a good little toots. <laughs> and, um... Uh, she starts doing plant research, reading from probably an Encyclopedia Britannica, while Jeffrey. Did is you have Britannica? Britannica. I didn't what? have it, but there was advertisements on the TV for it. You've never had. So how did you do like projects for school? There was encyclopedias in the library. I never so did, had did one in my use, house. But did you use the, yeah. the Britannica Lenoir? Uh, and I don't think I used the. I don't think we had high. I used Britannica Lenoir. Okay. It's Br Britannica for, for not for kids. It's for like. For uh, let's say no. How do you say not kids? Yeah, like in between kids to adults, like teenagers. Adolescents. Adolescents. Yeah. yeah. Britannica for adolescents. Yeah. And Aviv, Encyclopedia Aviv. So she's saying that maybe maybe this is an invasive species, maybe cross pollinated with another one. Uh, he's just trying to watch the game. She yells at him. He offers to put on headphones and she just... Wait, that's my... That I have a note about it. Because all women are very <laughs> nagging and annoying sometimes. She she was like... He just like put Hashtag the game not on. all women. But go on. Yes, all women. Yeah. Beside me. So no, no. You mean all women beside me. Beside me. You're beside me. You nag me. So... Right. I am confused now. Okay, never mind. So he started to watch the game and she was like, I'm reading. So I was like, okay, I'll put headphones on. And she was like, oh no, I'll go to the other room. Yeah, drama. The drama queen. I do that better though. Yeah, better. And, and then it kind of cuts back and forth. We learn about, we meet some new characters. There's a guy working for the Department of Health. And he is at a French restaurant. Because as we know, French restaurants are constantly violating health codes and so he's there <laughs> inspecting the kitchen specifically i think it's a bolognese where they, yeah he 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 must have got a hot tip or something because he goes in and he pulls something out of the sauce that they claim is a caper but he says is a cocky rat turd <laughs> yes and uh and, and then the chef's smashes windshield while he's inside. And because he you, never, to, you never want to say something like insulting to a French chef. Or chef in general. Well, yeah, he's taking, there, he's taking he money out of your pockets. So. I'm going to tell all his joke before, uh, jokes before you say Oh, them. yeah, you I mean you've heard me say them. I'll just throw some new ones out there. I don't care. Ooh, so, you're so talented. So Matthew makes a long-distance phone call from mm. deep one in the time, friend zone. One time in the restaurant that I worked, uh, that I work now, uh, there was a guy that complained that his food wasn't hot enough, but he didn't complain to the people that working there. He just made a phone call to the people that are in charge. And how do you call him? Donald Sutherland's. Maybe. He called Donald Sutherland's and had him come to Who's Donald the Sutherland? guy that plays the health inspector. Yeah, and then he came the day after. Yes. So Very mature Americans, very mature. 
So Donald Sutherland made a call from deep within the friend zone to his co-worker, who was apparently the woman that we've already met, Elizabeth, while he's clipping articles out about spider colonies that fell from the sky or some strange thing. And she goes to sleep, and she wakes up, and she went to sleep with the flower, little grape leaf right next to her, and it was in a little glass thing, so Jeffrey wakes up and he's sweeping it into a dustpan. It was dust on the east side of the bed. Yeah, and he wakes up, he's all businessman-like, he's wearing a three-piece suit. We didn't really get that impression that he was a suit-wearing type of guy, but he's very stoic, doesn't say anything to her. And then he takes the cleaned-up flower and he throws it <gasps> in the I trash. I forgot to say my most important thing. What? I'm For going to interrupt you? Of course. Yes. I'm not going to say that, though. First, they're in San Francisco. I want to go to San Francisco. Ah, uh, yes, yes, yes. And who is this? It's uh, our San Francisco travel agent. Oh, thank you, Luli. Yeah. And second, their alarm is amazing. I need that. It's like... Oh, I'm, I'm glad. Oh, cool. I'm sure, I'm sure that's a, something that people really want to listen to. Thank you for yelling that in my ear. If they need to wake up, if they fell asleep in front of a recap and they're like, oh my God. No, they didn't. Thank they you. just shut our recap off. No. So for everybody that is too far away from your iPod or... Uh, Nobody's listening to this on an iPod, but your iPhone or your I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, sorry about that annoying noise. That was their alarm, though. You liked an alarm clock in a movie, and you did an impression of it. That's yeah. almost more, more offensive than your impression of scary Korean language voice. Okay. From, okay, so. Okay. so I, I keep my, my... I keep our... Fans alive. Yeah, you have to, because you think they <laughs> fell asleep, so you set maybe. the alarm. <laughs> yeah, because you talk most of the time, so maybe they fell asleep. So Jeffrey <laughs> walks out to the dump truck and or the garbage truck, and he throws the flower dustpan in there, and then he just stares awkwardly at it, and Elizabeth thinks something's up with him, doesn't know what's going on, so she goes he to asked work. The guy, he asked the guy like something, and then the guy was like, over there. Yeah, so she's he was there. and it felt it felt like he doesn't have any emotions or feelings, which made me feel like he's trying to do math. Yeah, he was he, trying Matt to have sex have, with me, and uh, yeah. so he doesn't have feelings or emotions. So Elizabeth is late for work, so she rushes past a banjo player named Harry. I think his name is Harry, and then uh, she goes to. <sighs> Oh, she goes to Matthews later that night. Uh, Matthew, the guy who is the health inspector, Donald Sutherland, suspecting that Jeffrey is not Jeffrey, starts explaining that she saw him talking to weird guys, and uh, and he's cooking up a nice meal with lots of celery, celery. in it. He's cutting a lot of celery, he puts it in a bowl, and then he cuts more celery and added to the celery. Yeah, well, I mean, celery is made mostly of water, so maybe it dissolved. It's healthy. Anyway, she seems very concerned while he's making the wheel, and then when they're eating on his nice outdoor patio, she's very flirty, and then we go into the, the daily life of Matthew. He drops off his dry cleaning, it's run by Asian people, which I don't think it was a stereotype then, I think this is groundbreaking. Asian people had just gotten into the dry cleaning business, and the man that works there, because it's always the woman at the counter, who, who had an argument about him, about something not being a coffee stain. And I don't know why you could... You episode ago, you called me racist. Yeah, well... I learned from the best. You are. I'm just commenting on uh, a, a stereotype <laughs> that, it gets, I'm not racist. that gets used in, uh, in As film. As I'm telling you, I don't see race, I see colors. Oh, that's... You shouldn't call them coloreds. But, um... So... I don't know why you have to justify what the stain in your clothing is, but he's having an argument about what is or is not a coffee stain with a woman. I'm kidding about the color. I felt bad now. Yeah, and then... I'm not racist. And then the mom... The mom... Well, maybe she's the mom. The... The mom takes the clothing into the back, and the dad says, You're a doctor, right? 
And he says, no. That's I, racism. I work I saw a guy in a suit and he claimed that he's a doctor. Yeah, he's, uh, he works at the health department. But he's like, I'll, I'll entertain this question, though. <laughs> what do you got? Uh, she's like, something's wrong with her. She's not my wife. And okay. so he's like, okay, well, uh, this is a crazy interaction. I just wanted to get some clothing cleaned. So I'm going to leave now. And he walks out past Harry, the banjo player. Apparently he's a... Uh, a homeless musician that's always outside. I think he was played by Harry Nilsson, who was uh, big in the 70s at the time, and a very popular musician, despite the fact that he never really played live, ever. Also, I don't know him. You don't know him, but you might recognize the songs, which I, I can't name off the top of my head. But, um, because it was so popular. Well, the only I got introduced from Harry Nilsson because he covered, he did an entire album of Randy Newman covers. So I can name Randy Newman songs, and you tell me if you remember hearing a version. different version of those. So see, this is not a good conversation. So uh, Matthew goes to work, and he finds Elizabeth there at the end of the day. She's in tears, and starts explaining that she thinks there's a conspiracy because she followed uh, her, her man around, Jeffrey around for a while meeting with strange people, passing documents over, and Matthew tries to settle her down, saying, we're, we're going to this book release party from my friend who's a psychiatrist, and his name is Kibner, and you could talk to <laughs> That's him. That's exactly what he said, and his name is Kibner. Well, they, they say Kibner, so... I'm not quoting the film exactly. You got any notes about Kibner? No, I have notes about it later. Can we just share you have notes about picture? Nader? No, no, no. Let's, let's, you tap me or... I didn't tap you. Ta no, I'm saying tap me with your injured right hand whenever you want to say something. No. And I'll allow it. Just hit butt me in the shoulder with your chin whenever you want to talk. And, uh, no, no, chin, not shin. Come on. Shin. And, um... So they're driving to this book party. Oh, they're falling asleep again. I'll do the noise again. Oh, God. No, I'm kidding. So they're driving to the book party... And uh, a, a gentleman runs out into the street and starts yelling, They're coming! They're coming! And then runs away, and a mob of people follow him, along with a police bicycle, not a police bicycle, a police motorcycle. And then you hear a car Scooter. screech, and they turn, and they see the man bloody on the street. People standing over him, police kind of waving people around. Of course, Elizabeth's concerned, and Matthew... Uh, says he'll just do a, he'll just call the police later and fill out a witness report because they got to get to this book signing and that's more important. And so they uh, they go there. Anything? No, I was I was very tired. I'm I'm taking like very strong pain killers. So when we watched it, I was on them, and I was in pain. All my body was really painful. Yeah. So I fell asleep like... Oh, you would say your body is painful. You say your body is hurting. It's hurt. Oh, come on. I hate that thing. Okay. Kali Kola Goof. Kali Kola Goof. Exactly. So my body was in pain? Oh, uh, yes. In pain. Yay! So... Yes, I fell asleep here and there. It wasn't that concentrated. Yeah. I mean, I it's a 70s best. movie. They kind of have a different vibe. I thought the, the, no, the movie was, was a little... It was just five minutes under two hours long, but in 70s movie, it's not all action. I mean, there's a little bit of, they want you to know the character a little bit more. So I you, didn't want to know. So maybe scenes here and there are a few minutes longer than they would have been. Maybe you don't need to see him preparing the entire dinner or, or, <laughs> uh, celery. or you know, reviewing his receipts from the uh, dry cleaning place, talking to all the French chefs afterwards or... Whatever. So, um, there's a woman at the book thing, and they get there, and she's freaking out about, that man's not my husband. And so immediately, a guy that we assume is Kibner, he's played by Leonard Nimoy, a.k.a. Mr. Spock, from In Search Of, and... From what? Also Star Trek. Nano, Nano! Use the Force, Jetson. Is that Star Trek? I don't know. Live long and prosper. That's the one. I'm young. Yeah. So he is there and he tries to assure her that, oh, no, no, that's your husband. Everything's going to be fine. We could talk about it later. 
blah, blah, blah. But Elizabeth is like, I'm experiencing something similar to that. I got to go talk to that lady. And then they kind of cock block her from doing that, which is a, okay, maybe that's not the most appropriate term. Cock blocking is a phrase used when a guy is trying to talk to a girl you know, or another you know what guy. Do you know that cock block is? What? A girl that doesn't let the guy fuck her. Yeah. Okay. Cock okay, block. that's a good. I mean, girls. That's can what be, I thought. Girls can be cock blocks too. Basically, a cock block is anyone that interferes with a cock. <laughs> uh, that is. That is. I mean, the cock isn't really doing anything yet. But the man that is curious, though the man or person that owns the cock would like to um, use the cock. use it on a new person, usually a new person, maybe an old person, and uh, not not an age thing, and uh, and and they just interrupt or or throwing out vibes that prevents it from happening. So she's trying to talk to this girl about how she's going through a similar thing. And the man that is not her husband and Kibner are trying to shoo her away and separate the two and blah, blah, blah. So uh, he Kibner basically takes her outside and seriously mansplains to her that it's, uh, you know, couples and divorce and hallucinations and all this stuff. And meanwhile, we meet this very eccentric character that is a big fan of Matthews and he's someone that... Film fans will recognize a, yeah, a very young Jeff Goldblum, who you didn't recognize at first because he doesn't have the glasses that he's wearing in Jurassic Park, <laughs> which we want. That's, that's why I didn't recognize yeah, him. Yeah, she would be totally fooled by the whole Clark hey, Kent Superman dynamic. I, I recognize people that you know, not that I know. Yeah, yeah, you think you recognize people when you don't, like the guy from The Stepfather when he had a beard. You thought he I thought was, it's you. You thought he was any guy with the beard you've ever seen. No, it's not true. Yeah. So Jeff Goldblum, Goldblum plays a very I recognize neurotic you. friend that just wants to hang out with Kibner. I mean, uh, does not like Kibner. Why does... I don't know why he's there. He just wants to hang out with Matthew. He wants to be his best friend. And Matthew's kind of like, man, I just got to this party. You're bugging the shit out of me. Some lady's freaking out. This co-worker that I'm secretly in the friend zone with is has left. What's going on here? I can't even get a drink. Can I get some rat turds from a French restaurant? And so they go outside. They've already had their time at the little party ruins. And then uh, they leave. The Kibner tells uh, Rebecca, no, Elizabeth that they can talk again sometime soon. Jack leaves to go to his, where his wife, I believe they were his wife, his young wife, Nancy, works at a mud bath That's he, he owns the place, though. He owns it, okay. He made one of those strange mud bath place investments. Which we're gonna bath in mud? What is Bathe. It? We're gonna do our bath Bathe, mud. We're not really going bathe to bathe in mud. We're going to the Dead Sea in Israel, and they have mud there because it's yeah. a sea. And it's not a sea. It's the lowest place on earth. It's okay, but it's a body of water. It's, the stuff. Dead Sea is not a sea, just like Rhode Island uh, is not an island. It's kind of like a lake. It doesn't have a tide. Huh? It's salt water lakes. I mean, there's salt lakes, but Salt Lake City. Yes, it's in Utah, which yeah. we've not watched any movies from, so you don't want to go to. No, I've so been there. Won't. I don't want to go there. Anymore. Yeah. My mom took me to see Mormons. All right, so what <laughs> My about... My mom is racist. What about mud baths? Have you ever dug yourself in a mud bath hole? Or no. Maybe, no. No? No. But we have some mud that my sister brought from the Dead Sea. Okay. <laughs> there you go. In a bag. No. Yeah. So, uh, there's also, it was rainy yesterday. If you want to just so, we meet a couple of different characters in the mud bath. There's a big fat guy that can't get out and he needs help. He nags Nancy to get out and then he takes a shower and he gets a real awkward massage where he lies on his back. And she's and just stopping his stomach. Yeah, she's rubbing his sizable belly. And then uh, 
Then you see Mr. Gianni, a strange bearded man, reading a, a now very muddy book in there. It's called Wor Worlds in Collision. And he's telling Nancy about it, how it's a must read. Do you know who it reminds me of? The guy, the, the doctor from Twin Peaks. Dr. Jacoby? Yes. Dr. Dr. Amp? Yes, a the little bit. The fucks are at it again! So, the uh... Or the glasses, the beard, it's like... Yeah, meanwhile, Na uh, Matthew meanwhile. brings <laughs> Natalie home. And there's flowers with the weird grape leaves roll in it there. Uh, Nancy, meanwhile, back at the mud place, finds that there's a, a body covered in goo in one of the rooms. What is goo? Goo. It's like a gel or anything. It's like slime. Rear. 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 Yes. Oh, I just found one of the toughest words for you to say. But it's not a real... Rear. It's not a real body. It's kind of like a... It's an unformed... Like a husk of a body, almost. There's no definition to like the face. There's no fingerprints they find out on it, and uh, poor Jack, that's Jeff Goldblum, is just trying to relax. And so then we see the correlation between when he closes his eyes, the body opens its eyes, and it really freaks Nancy Nancy out. So she calls Matthew about it, and uh, she's under a lot of duress. Matthew comes over. In one moment. And then uh, Matthew's, his head is in the, thinking about all the things that Elizabeth was saying about how the, uh, she doesn't think that someone is someone, and she, Jeffrey is not who he was, and... So he calls her up, but she's not there. She's in bed, and Jeffrey is standing over her, so she thinks something must be weird. And uh, so he goes to get her. And then I had a note. It's boring. <laughs> I think it was the painkillers talking, because I think it's things are just... Maybe. after up. Yeah, but after that they wrote, Matt and I fell asleep. I did not fall asleep at yes, any point did. during oh, this movie. Oh, yes, you did. It oh, no, I didn't. So, Matthew breaks into Elizabeth's house while Jeffrey is downstairs, acting like the old Jeffrey in a way, because he's watching TV with headphones on, but he's not watching the Golden State Warriors game. He's watching... Clocks. Clocks on TV. <laughs> and I don't know how and loud the sound is. It's not a name is. of a show. Yeah, he's not watching the Coldplay video from 30 years later. Um... He's watching black and white clocks. I don't know if the ticking is really loud. He doesn't hear a man breaking into his home upstairs, smashing a window to get in. So he goes in and he freaks out a little bit because he's, uh, he sees this gooey Elizabeth lookalike body on the ground. But then he quickly looks over and he sees her unconscious on the bed. So... First of all, I don't know if he freaked out appropriately enough about how he weird that is. Maybe he wasn't that excited or... Yeah. I don't know. He was fine. Yeah. And meanwhile, back at the, uh... At the old mud pit... Do you know why he's fine? Because he's not Korean. <laughs> the Korean people at the whaling... They would have fallen down a lot. They... No, they took every scene seriously and they reacted like they would react in real life. Okay. He reacted like in Hollywood. So I don't know if it's oh Nancy God, or someone, or maybe Matthew called before, but they call Kibner over to the the mud place to see about this body thing. and uh, So Kibner says, I didn't find a body. And then they look and there's a window open. And on the outside of the window is a dump truck, trash truck, driving off. What's going on? And Matthew takes the unconscious body of Elizabeth out of her house, somehow without Jeffrey noticing or catching them, and brings her to the uh, mud place. He calls the police. She's up by the time they arrive. There. Yeah. He calls the police. They bring her over to Elizabeth's house to go kind of tell what happened and get this 
get Jeffrey arrested, you know, because the he's he works for the health department. He has faith in the law. There's no body. It looks like a bunch of plants where she where her body was, but they're like potted plants, almost like they were arranged in a way that you would mistake it for a body. But good news. The police. What was that? It was just a dramatic buildup of gases inside my body. Okay. And Very dramatic. <laughs> so the police are somehow big fans of Kibner. He's the Dr. Phil of the 70s. My wife reads all your books. Uh, can you beam me up, Scotty? All that bullshit. So he convinces the police to uh, excuse the fact that this stranger just called in a hoax, kidnapping, there's a, a fake body thing, got all these police officers there, and then admitted to actually going in and kidnapping a woman and breaking and entering. So he's like, we'll just work it out with ourselves. Let's work, work this out. So Jack and Nancy are very upset. Kibner tells Matt he believes him. I believe you, Matt. After the police leave. But... Then he leaves in a car with fucking Jeffrey and the husband from the book signing the day before. So obviously he's been playing them this whole time. Ooh. So they're back at the uh, either the mud place or they maybe they went to Matt's house by then. And Jack is smelling the flower. Elizabeth notices and she kind of puts the pattern of the disappearances together and asks where that flower came from, and Liz decides to take it to her health department lab to test it. And then we meet a very sexist character. Yeah. But he's sexist? Yeah, because he's like, uh, I'll test this. You don't have to test this. Yeah, because he was mad at her that she's always late, and she's like... Yeah. I think it's because he was a pod person, and he was kind of protecting their... Uh, Maybe identities or trying to play a little cock block defense to, yeah. to her finding out that this is not an actual he species. He doesn't want her to get his cock. So he cock blocked. <laughs> so, uh, did they go back to meet some of the... Okay, I definitely dozed off a little bit at one point. Oh, so I admit it. I take okay. back what I said before. You're yes. always right. Okay. Thank you. Can you say it again? Loud. Yes. Thank you. Say that again loud. No. So, we, we go back and... That's how we got married. I just wanted to be always It's a little, right. like, montage of them going back to talk to the people who had claimed their spouses were different people, and they all say, they're fine now. Everything is good. And then we, uh... Matthew is calling, you know, we called the police already. They didn't help, so... He's got to go above their heads. He's calling the mayor and the health department. And they all tell him to keep it under wraps. And they're working on it. So Elizabeth, still tired out from this whole ordeal, is given a pill from Kibner to help her sleep. And then he leaves. And Jack and Nancy say that they're probably going to stay there with Matt. Matt dozes off outside. And then you see the the first appearance of the flower from horror. How do you call it? Or a scary little, little shop, shop of, horror. of horror. First, a bunch of vines climb up his arm, presumably from a giant version of the grape leaves sandwich that is these plants. And then uh, the flower that it produces. Looks like a gooey head going out the top of it, but it's not just one. It's so what, what we're seeing is what's actually happening. People aren't being possessed or something. There's new people being created, and the old people are being destroyed somehow. So in the trash truck. Yeah, and so all of these, it, it's multiple bodies. How do you say it? Trash truck. Coming out. Yeah, trash truck. I keep calling it a dump truck. Dump but truck. it's a trash truck that brings things to the dump. So just work with me. Myself. I mean, I've made the mistake okay, over and over again. And I'm just then, correcting you. No, no, no. I, just, I don't need to people know what I'm talking about. They're not bringing it to don't. a 
construction site. That's not unusual. Oh. Once in a not while, I'm like making. Well, to be corrected by anyone. Just letting them know that once in a while I'm making weird, uncomfortable noises of pain. Yes, she's just oh. making those noises to cover up farts. So <laughs> Matthew calls the police, oh. and and they answer him by name, but he didn't give him what is. It didn't say his name. So then Jack is realizing how big this conspiracy is. And then the power is cut. And unlike most of the horror movies that we've seen so far. No here, one ran downstairs. Yeah. No one ran downstairs to immediately die when checking on the breaker. Yeah. But they do notice that there are crowds coming down the street and police cars coming. And they are pretty much barricaded in. So he, uh, Matthew, before he leaves, he sees what is now almost a fully grown duplicate version of himself lying with goo on his face on the ground of the garden. And so he... Took a shovel, I would say. Yeah, it's like a hoe. Hoe. What is a hoe? A hoe is used for... It's like... It's what like a fun? straight edge shovel. You're not et. digging with it, but you're et. digging to like plant seeds. Yeah, et. And et, yes. Et also it's a pen. Okay. And also it's another word for time. Gotcha. So he took the time, he took the hoe. It's not a whore. Hoe? A hoe? I don't know. So he took it and he smashed his face. And it's not a body actually, it's kind of like a broken, I don't know. Uh, what do you so mean it's a broken... I don't know, it breaks its face, it's not... Yes, it caves in his face, it's a, like a like a gooey pinata. And then he yeah. leaves. And they're being chased. <laughs> she bless out. you! God Sorry. bless you! Oh. Oof. What? You're covering up the fart. It's not fart. Okay, she's really My farting. rib. So she ate ribs and she's farting. So they, uh, people are chasing them down. I didn't eat anything. I did, but I'm not sure. They're chasing them down and they hide under the stairs. They book it out in a different direction after the mob leaves, but a motorcycle cop sees them and then leads the mob after them. And then they find themselves at a six foot five chain link fence. But they can't climb it. There's nowhere to go. How can yeah. you climb a chain link fence? It's a little bit pointy on the top if you land directly on it from the right angle. So they're cornered. And Jack has the idea for him and Nancy to run away so that the helicopter, as I saw it's it... It's not a helicopter. I think I thought it's a, it's a spaceship. Yeah. Not a spaceship. It was a police helicopter with a flashlight on it, and they, uh, they follow Jack and Nancy. So Matt and Elizabeth, what do you do when you're running from the police? You immediately go... To a strip club! Yeah, they immediately go to the red light district and get into a cab. The cabbie immediately gets on the radio. Sometimes that's an okay thing. The cabbies do that. They report their, uh, their fare. I've taken cabs before and they've done that in smaller towns like Salem where you have to report to your boss where you are, I guess. And uh, It's like us. You have to report me where you are. Yeah. You could be a, you can be my I cab am your driver. cab driver. And the bill is coming in the mail. Soon. Especially now when I can't drive my scooter because of that. Yeah. Is your scooter go okay, by the way? Is that is there anything missing on the right side? Or does it always look like that? What? On the front wheel. What do you mean? Does it always look like that on the right yeah. side? So, um... My scooter is fine. Have you ridden it? Did you test it? Mm, not really. Okay. I think you might need a new scooter. <gasps> You're gonna but, buy me a uh, new scooter? I'm not gonna buy you a new scooter. The guy that hit you with this car is gonna buy you a no, new scooter. No, I don't scooter. think it's good. I think And he's gonna pay you stuff. for all your missed wages at your job. So, uh... Um, You're in charge of that. Yeah. You're my man. Okay. Be my man. Alright, so... He radios to whoever. 
And he starts asking them questions. They're a little bit more than small talk, and it's certainly not cash cab. No prizes are given out. And he asks them what they, the airline they're going to. What airline? And they say United, and they're, there's a roadblock. And he's like, well, we're picking someone up. And then they get to the roadblock, and there's uh, cops. They walk over to the car, but boom, they are already out the back door. Without paying. Yeah. Why are you gonna Why are you gonna pay some podman cabbie? I don't know. He did his job. Yeah, that's. He did his job by snitching on them to the head alien, pod person in charge. Yeah. So the uh, they're running. They for some reason are going back to like the health department, and they they see Harry the banjo player and his dog asleep next to a pod, which is not producing a human being. It's spitting out some uh, sort of red gel thing and then they go into the Department of Health they completely ignore the stoic standing janitor who has got a mop handle under his chin who just kind of looks like him go into the laboratory and they uh, grab some darts off the laboratory dartboard just in case yeah and then they start hiding because there's a man with a flashlight in there looking for them. So what happens then? And then they kiss. They kiss. It's the best timing to do that. Stressful situations yeah. bring people together. When a man is about when to... We did that, when we did that, when we did that last podcast a kiss. Okay, let's kiss. Aww. Where's your flashlight? <laughs> so they... Uh, My husband's so romantic. So they look out the window, they see hordes of, pod, no. hordes of people carrying around these pods, and Matt makes the connection that they have to stay awake. They have to stay awake by any means necessary. So they take a bottle of speed that's hanging out in the laboratory, and how much speed do they take? So she reads, it's like, it says to take one, and it's like, okay, we'll take five. Yeah, it's a good... His answer, I felt like he already took some speeds. Maybe. Okay, well, uh, we'll take five. Okay, so they're taking five. Yeah, and good timing, because who comes in but Kibner, Jeffrey, and a random grunge-looking dude. They come in, and they, uh, they are clearly all pod people, and they get stopped, and they uh, put a needle in them. And that needle is basically a sedative to help you sleep, Kibner says. But luckily they took the five speeds, so they're balanced. Yeah. Now they're just like regular time. Yes. And then they go into this whole uh, thing about uh, Kidner starts pontificating. Don't be trapped by old concepts. You're evolving into a new life form. But before I could say this whole 15 minute long thing, all of a sudden uh, they attack. Jack and Kibner both get put in a freezer. Uh, and then they run. They leave there. Oh, they killed the guy. They, they killed, killed the Jurassic Park guy. No. Yes, in the, with the thing with the. I thought they that. pushed them both in the freezer. No, they, he killed him with the, the. Oh yeah, okay, that's right. He stabbed him. Oh with my the dark. god, you fell. He like might not have been sleep. dead. No, no, I remember that. He but was. We dead. we kept this like we watched the movie like three because days ago. Because then they saw her. And then she was like, "Where is it?" And they ignored. Oh, okay. Her. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I didn't fall asleep for that. I remembered it. I didn't write, they killed him with darts here. They escaped there, and they're leaving, and they run into Nancy. And Nancy immediately says, oh, where, where's Jack? And they're like, uh, well, let's go well, find we Jack. Let's go, let's go. Let's forget about that. Maybe we'll tell you a better time. At first, there was a moment of tension. Was Nancy also turned? But no, because she said she learned how to, to walk amongst them. All you got to do is... Not show emotion and kind you of could be so stuff. good among them. I'm thinking about it, I'm going for my pod person license. So uh, they start walking am amongst them until Elizabeth freaks out because, because I want to tell. So there was the the dog and the the banjo player, and so I have no idea why and how, but they combined. So we saw the body of the dog with the face of the bunch of player. Yeah. And then I wrote, what the fuck, the dog! 
it's hard for me to add like words in the middle. What the fuck the dog is what right. What the fuck the dog. Yeah. So. Yeah, so that was her reaction too, but with screams. Yeah. So they had to run. Yeah, and they're running, the crowd's chasing them, but they see, luckily, an open box truck, which is transporting these pods to this secret fenced off lair. So they jump in right before the police can get there. They're expecting all the other trucks. They didn't inspect that one. And it goes past this chain link fence gate. And of course, you can't open chain link fences, so they're safe. And they stumble onto a giant ocean liner and they think, oh, this might be their way out. This is the only way. They couldn't get to the airport. Maybe they could take this big boat that's leaving. Of course, at this point, they don't know that the, all the stuff is being lifted onto the boat, all these big pallets of pods, and they kind of start to feel despair. What are we going to do now? And then Elizabeth falls asleep. He tries waking her up, but she turns into... Maybe she didn't take five. Maybe. Six. Or maybe she just got a little bit too much of that needle. So she turns into a husk, a, just a shell of a person, but not five feet away, emerging, naked Elizabeth. And she is a pod person through and through. You Can said something interesting last time about that. About like her naked. Oh yeah, well it's a horror movie, so you gotta have uh, some nudity, so they, they kind of saved it for the end. The stepfather was the same way, too. You've invested this much time in the movie. We're going to re reward you with some nice boobies. Yeah. And so we see that. That's what we want. So he... Uh, I want nice boobies. So he runs away. He goes into this big warehouse, which is now at, like a grow factory. Looks like present-day legal marijuana workshop. And he climbs up to the scaffolding, overlooking the whole operation. They got all these lights over the pods and... Uh, and he sees a an axe and a fire extinguisher up there. So he goes for the axe, which sets off the fire alarm. And uh, I know that guy. And they um, the fire alarm is set, so the people are freaking out underneath. They also don't like loud noises, and so she chops off the uh, she. I don't see gender. I'm sorry. Matthew chops down the. Um, As I said, the feminist. He chops humanist. So they chop down the the roofs with, with the, the lights so they start burning up the pods. So he might not be able to, to save the world, but at least he's doing some damage. Like the Red Sox did some damage to the LA Dodgers in the World Series of 2018. So there's all these, this is a big fire, there's a mess, and he escapes to go hide outside, which is, we know, He's an expert at hiding. He works for the health department. People hide stuff, he hides. It all works out. And then uh, the next day, we assume. Hmm? What happens the next day? I fell asleep. Oh, yeah, you fell asleep. So he's like, oh, it's nighttime. I'm falling asleep. It's a whole movie about how you shouldn't fall asleep, and she falls asleep. Um, he sees school buses with kids being... We didn't watch the movie that teach you, like, not get hit by a car, so I wasn't in that lesson. So yeah, we should watch it. Final Destination. So there's a... Uh, watch that. So there's pod, pods being delivered and kids being brought into this big building, school buses, and then uh, people are being unloaded. And he returns to work because the pod people are... They're doing... They're doing their things. Like they take over a body or create a new version of a person and then they're uh, they inhabit their life. Like they go back to doing what that person was doing in the same way that Jeffrey was listening to headphones watching clocks on TV earlier. I, I felt that it was like a good idea for the world. Yeah, these are just pod people working at the health department because you, you can't have rat turd soup even if you're a pod person. Yeah. We could so, save some, like, emotions, feelings. Why do we need those? Yeah, so he's acting very emotionless. You know, Nancy taught him well. And he's at work, but he's keeping his distance from the other pod people. He lets them take the elevator first. He takes the elevator alone. He's walking down the street outside afterwards. 
And then you hear Nancy say, Matthew. And she turn, he turns to her and opens her mouth. And it makes the pod person weird noise signal. Don't do an impression of it. And then... And then I woke up. <laughs> credits. With no music. No, I woke, I woke up when he screamed. Yeah, that's it. Credits with no music, I think, is a highly underrated effect. I like when movies do that. They force you to really process what just happened and kind of sit there and soak it all in. And uh, it was cool. I mean, I like when movies do a, a juxtaposition of different type of song than the, the mood of what just happened. And no song is almost the most badass of all because you don't have to play royalties to some band on your soundtrack, too. So you save money. <laughs> but it was good. It was cool to watch the classic. Now that I know that there was an original, original one, maybe we should go back and watch that. Maybe. But With all the rest of the movies. Maybe that. Right yeah, we might watch the original versions of some movies and some one or two sequels or something in the time after our hashtag 31 days of horror movies in 30 days, 31 days, whatever. Till then, press the subscribe, subscribe, share, uh, yeah. wear a helmet. Uh, Subscribe to our World like. Helmet page. Love like. Love like. Love like. La, 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 yeah, listen, la, la, leave a review on iTunes. Tell a friend on SoundCloud. Tell friends. Like the Facebook page what and are you, Twitter. Me? You have only one friend. Tell friends. Yes. Tell Chandler, tell Joey, tell Phoebe, tell Monica, tell All Rachel, tell taca, the monkey taca. and Ross. Oh my god, 51 minutes. Thank you. Oh my god. Bye. Bye.